earth Once dust but now light Living in times of flesh and bone Behold Spiritual fire Set a flame in my heart Illuminate the darkest hour Where I wait for the dawn to see the glory and the power of the Lord Hallelujah Welcome to worship at our Saviors. Today, we're recording this service in the chapel because work is taking place even as we speak in our sanctuary, creating the space for our new uh, sound system. Let us begin with an opening prayer. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Help us to believe that you are actively establishing your kingdom and are involved in our world. Work in us and through us that we may bear your truth and love to a world in need. Open us now to your presence as we worship. Amen. Scattered seeds and emerging seedlings are welcome here. Youngest children, treasured elders, everyone in between, welcome as we worship God. In the love of Christ, created new, we gather. 
Let us confess our sins and hear the promise of forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves over into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, the things we have done and the things we failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now hear God's word of promise. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. I have two readings today. The first is from Ezekiel 17 and talks about God's promise of abundant life and he uses the image of a tree. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs, 
I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree. And I make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The gospel reading for today is taken from the fourth chapter of Mark. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as, is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He not, does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first a stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is wiped at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. And he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Growing up on the farm, every spring, once the ground was dry enough to be worked to prepare a seed bed, my father would then apply anhydrous uh, ammonia, a source of nitrogen, on the fields that he planted to plant corn. And more fertilizer, herbicides, and insecticides were applied along with the seed by the planter. And then we waited. And depending on the weather, the soil temperature, and it sometimes would take a week, sometimes as long as three weeks, for the corn to peek through the ground. And there was always the danger that we'd get too much rain and the corn would, draw, uh, would um, drown out or that the germination rate advertised by the seed company was somehow wrong and the precious corn seeds simply didn't grow. The time between planting and seeing the plants appear was always a bit of an anxious time. Because as a farmer, you'd done all you could do. And now all you could do was wait. Was the seed sprouting? Was it growing? As you looked at the bare field, you couldn't help but wonder if all the energy, financial investment, and time were paying off. There were times when my father would walk out into the field and dig down to try and find the seed and to see if it had sprouted. My father was concerned because sometimes it all just wasn't warm enough and the seeds would rot in earth and ground. And even when the corn did peek through the soil, my father was very interested in how many corn plants came up in the row. And of course, not all the plants came up at the same time. Some might, some might lag by a day or two. So there was more waiting. We know a lot more about agriculture, horticulture, and agronomy than the people of Jesus' day. And yet, some things have not changed. We know a lot about how and what a seed needs to grow. Things like soil conditions, temperature, nutrients, and moisture. 
We have insecticides and herbicides to protect the seed from being eaten or choked out by other plants. We know a lot about how a seed sprouts and we can provide the most ideal conditions. But the one thing that hasn't changed is we cannot control whether any given seed sprouts. That hasn't changed since the time of Jesus. In today's gospel, Jesus tells a short parable about seeds to tell us, tell us something about the kingdom of heaven. Much like my father planting corn, someone goes out and scattered seeds on the ground and then sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows, he does not know how. Now, on the surface, Jesus' parable seems straightforward, obvious, and a bit of ho hum, just a description about planting seeds. The point of the parable, though, is to help us see differently, to reframe and reorient us. Jesus is not trying to teach us about agriculture or horticulture or agronomy. He's not trying to tell us about farming. Jesus is using a well-known and obvious fact about seeds and planting to help us understand something about how the kingdom of God works. And while this parable seems obvious and unsurprising in its description of how a seed grows, it does become surprising and downright frustrating as a way the kingdom of God works works. Why? Because the farmer does nothing after the seed is planted. All he can do is sleep and rise day after day. All he can do day after day is look out at the planted field and wait. The seed sprouts and grows. The seed produces the stalk and the ear. The farmer does nothing. And in case we're tempted to miss the point, Jesus adds, the farmer knows not how the seed grows. The point of Jesus' parable is not about how agriculture, horticultural, or agronomy we can get all caught up focusing on what we now know from science and how our knowledge in agriculture has progressed and miss the point. The point is, the one who sows does not know how it is that the seed grows. The action is done by the seed, the growing the sprouting, the producing, the stalk are all done by the seed. Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is like the seed. It sprouts, it grows, it produces on its own. The one who sows, sleeps, and rises and simply has to trust that the seed will grow. And that's the part that part of me finds very frustrating. Because you see, I want to know how the seed grows so I can assist, so I can assure that it does. Part of me wants some control over the outcome and especially whether it grows in me. But the one sowing does not know how the seed sprouts and grows. I may want spiritual how-tos or give me a method, tell me a plan, Give me a takeaway. Tell me how I can participate, what I need to do. But like my father digging in the dirt, I want clear signs of the kingdom's presence. I don't like waiting. I don't looking, like looking at what appears to be bare spiritual fields. And then there's this part of me that wants to have an impact to have significance 
when it comes to the kingdom of God. There's a million ways that part of me wants to somehow, in the end, make this about me. And like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's easy for me to become bored and to fall asleep when it's not about me. And if it's not about me or you, aren't we quick to consider it irrelevant? Now that's not to say that the parables aren't intended to have an impact on us. They are. I like what Luther says in his explanation to the Lord's Prayer when he talks about the petition, thy kingdom come. Luther says, the kingdom of God comes whether we pray for it or not. But we ask in this prayer that it also may come among us. These parables that Jesus tells today that are intended to help us get over ourselves and deepen our trust in God. And it takes trust to believe that the seed is going to grow. It takes trust to believe that the kingdom of God is growing and that God is active. And if we're honest with ourselves, we know that this squares with our experience. Parents know that they can plant seeds in their children. Morals, values, proper ways of doing things. But in the end, they have no way of guaranteeing whether those seeds will sprout and grow. Teachers know this to be true when it comes to their students. I suspect that every teacher could tell you a story about a student who they really wondered about, or who was a real problem student, who years later they discovered did a complete turnaround. Sometimes God's activity in the world seems so small, like a mustard seed. And it's hard to trust that it will grow into something big and life-giving. It's hard to believe that it can come in the form of an invasive weed like mustard, rather than as a magnificent tree. It's hard to believe that, will grow, that God's kingdom can grow in an environment that's hot and harsh and hostile, like the desert where mustard grows, rather than on the cool, pleasant, and well-watered mountains. It takes faith to believe that God's kingdom is at work in us, through us, and even in spite of us. But there's good news here. There's part of me that rejoices that God's kingdom sprouts, grows, and produces without me. Because you see, I know there are times when I'm not aligned with what God wants. I know there's times when the good I would do I do not do. And it's good news that the kingdom of God is not dependent on me being a perfect follower of Jesus. The world would be in big trouble if it was. It is a gift that God does not make it all dependent on me or you. And that, in my case at least, would be a burden I don't know if I could bear. I think it would overwhelm and crush me. So hear this as good news. The Holy Spirit is active. The kingdom of God is growing. And you can trust it. And if you need to be reassured, go plant a seed. Amen.
please join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their need. Almighty and ever-loving God, we give you thanks that you are at work causing your kingdom, your rule, your will to sprout and grow and be productive in the world. Help us to align ourselves with what you are doing. Help us to know that we have significance, that you will be working through us to have an impact in the world. Help us to know that we are enough in your eyes. Give us the faith and the ability to trust that you are at work in those times when it seems like what you're doing is so small or that it's overwhelmed or overcome by the evil we see in our world. Help us, Lord, to follow where you have led the way. Strengthen us as we carry out your mission in the world, gathering those who've strayed, binding up the injured, providing support for the weak. Give us courage and strength to stand with those who are helping your people and against those who would exploit or harm your people. Take us by the hand, walk with us, that we might find the courage we need to face the challenges before us. We give you thanks that you continue to walk with us. We give you thanks for all the ways you show yourself to be the comforter of the weak and the strength of those in distress. Come now with your healing presence and bind up the brokenhearted and the afflicted. We especially ask for your health and healing for all those in need. We lift up to you today, Trent, Ryan, Lawson, Pete, John, Randy, Julie, Michael, and Bill. Comfort all who are grieving the loss of loved ones and give them a special sense of your comfort and hope. Be with those who stand in need of financial assistance who are suffering from anxiety or depression. We ask for the end of endless, senseless violence and ask you to, for the protection and care of those who work to keep us safe. Gracious God, encourage us and help us when we find ourselves disheartened and weighed down by illness, conflict, war, violence, or the realities of our changing world. Look upon the nations of the world and grant your grace. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, Guide the nations of the world into ways of justice and truth and establish among them peace that they may live according to your will. We lift up to you all those who are victims of war and violence and ask for your presence, help, restoration, and justice. We pray today especially for Palestine and Israel and Ukraine and Russia. We ask that you would help us in our own country heal the divisions among us, and help us all work together for the common good of all. Bless your church around the world and work that goes on to, for, in your kingdom. Grant your special blessing on our sister congregations of Elambaloli and Ihumeni in Tanzania. Watch over and protect Pastor Joel, Christy, Dorothy, and Misty the members of our Tanzania team, as they seek now to deepen our relationship 
with our brothers and sisters in Tanzania this month. Grant them safe travel. We pray that you would be at work in our families and help us as your people to be your heart, hands, and feet in the world and all we do in the coming week. Oh God, you've called us to be your servants and to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out and incur courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. All these things. And whatever else you see we need, we ask it now in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for the ways that you support us here at Our Saviors. We can do far more together than we can do alone. And we can't do what we do do without you and without your support. Remembering then that all that we have and all that we are are gifts from God, we offer our offertory prayer. Gracious God, thank you that your promises are sure and you are faithful. Help us to find joy in the offering of our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. And may you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Amen. For announcements uh, today, I want to uh, call to your attention that the New Creation Band and other musicians will be providing a concert at the Hastings Pavilion on Wednesday, June 19th at 7 p.m., weather permitting. In case of inclement weather, the concert will take place at Our Savior's Sanctuary. As uh, you heard in the prayers, the Tanzania team is in Tanzania. They left on June 11th. They'll plan to return on the 28th. Please keep them in your prayers. The team has put together a daily devotional booklet that they'll be using during the trip. And you can uh, read along with them and join them as they uh, read and study scripture. There's copies available at the church for those who'd like to join them. Another way that you can walk with our sister congregations and the Tanzania team is that we have an opportunity to make baby kits for Lutheran World Relief that will be distributed to mothers and newborn babies in Tanzania. You can watch the newsletter, the weekly email, go to our website, or contact the church office about the kinds of things needed in the kits and more information about how to make them. There are a number of youth events and activities and sign-ups available at Our Saviors. Watch the, look, uh, the weekly email, go to the website, or contact Amy for more information. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Come broken and weary Come battered and bruised My Jesus makes all things new All things new Come lost and abandoned Come blown by the wind He'll bring you back home again home again Rise up for you sleeper away The light of the dawn is upon you Rise up for you sleeper away It makes all things new All things new
my Jesus, he loves you still, loves you still. Things.